Switch.
Whew. Cracking. Bit of analysis on that one. Okay, so opened up with the E four. Pawn and push down onto our pawn, so we then captured. These games are getting tougher and tougher, so that's why I'm playing less of them. Or else I'll get the supers. Okay, so they brought the queen back, so again, it's falling in line with the previous games where the opponents have moved their queens two or three times in the beginning, in the opening. And it caused them a bit of distress because it just kept ch getting chased around so that they weren't really allowed to develop their pieces to the fullest extent. 
So we look to challenge the queen and they move the queen again. So they've not developed another piece, they've just moved the queen. And so we've developed three pieces now and the opponents only move their queen once. So they go and capture, they go for a greedy munch. We don't mind going for a greedy, them going for a greedy munch. It does have the shock factor because you go, oh man, I'm down a pawn, what am I going to do? But positionally on the board, they have only developed one piece, which is the queen. So we can start making inroads to attack their unprotected pawn. I mean, they could protect it, could move it, whatever, you know, that type of thing. But at least we're making progress with our pieces. We're moving our queen twice, but it's more beneficial for our team. Keyword is team here, working the pieces together as a team. So they come out and attack our queen not protecting the pawn um, but they it looks like they're trying to grab back the tempos that they lost with their queen move and the queen is stuck down in this on the other side of the board all by itself not supported by anyone else so then they're looking to develop the knight trying to help out trying to get developed we're putting pressure onto their king area with the bishop x-raying through to the king so we're developing another piece and they move the same knight again twice so again they're not developing further pieces so they're keeping their bishops blocked in not really mobilizing them at all the king is still stuck in the center of the board so we can grab they put a check on so again moving the queen but it's a not a nugatory there's nothing no such thing as a nugatory check but there are checks that really don't give you anything so it's like the potential value yeah that's where we're currently at within our um, evaluation is that the potential value for that move what what is it what, what's the follow-on from there what are you trying to gain yes it's potentially stopping our king from castling yes it's potentially attacking the knight here but is it all defensible can the knight come back and block so Looking a little bit deeper into the moves, can it be blocked? Was it a wasted move? The potential actual value. The queen is still stuck in the center of the board by itself. So they're now attacking our bishop. So we can take the knight off the board with a check on their king. Also on their queen. So they capture with the pawn. Our knight now can come and attack their queen. Gage bar is kind of on our side at this moment in time, which is, you know, unusual, but... We're getting there actually because we're trying to improve the potential value of the move. Our potential value is that we're attacking a higher piece with a lesser piece and it can come back and defend itself. Is also attacking the weak, weak, weak pawn here if we can get some support towards it. Our downside is our bishop is a little bit blocked in at the moment. So we're falling foul of potentially overpressing ourselves. Our queen is on the other side of the board, but it's functional because it's preventing this king from going castling on the queen's side. It's blocking off any links they've got with their rooks at the minute in time. We can safely go and castle, but we've got bigger fish to fry at the moment. So they bring the queen back. So now we can bring our knight back. So that's like the potential value of the move. Can it come back to safety if it is going to be attacked? So it's looking forward sense for each of the moves, as far as you can anyway. So they push this pawn down. I'm assuming it's to give the king some space here, but it's not allowed this bishop to actually get out of the game, you know, to get into the game. So again, that's a major loss in tempo, as far as I can see in the game. I'm happy for it because it's helping us to build our... Um, build and develop our pieces so I've got wind excuse me so we can grab this pawn here which is unprotected and it is actually attacking the rook as well as having the check on the king so the potential value for that capture is quite immense so they move the king so we grab the rook and thought, well there's no point dancing around could do all sorts of other fancy maneuvers but let's take that high high value piece off the board so we're up the exchange and then again this pawn pushes down i suppose this one is the one releasing the bishop 
in that sense there, but the king can't go and castle anymore. So they're way behind in terms of development of pieces, but you still have to be careful because his queen is still hovering around our king area. So we castle, king safety. Didn't want to fall into the realms of not castling, feeling good about pushing forward and then not actually having any defence for my king and my king being home alone. So knights hunt the bishops in our mantra, so we decided to go and attack this bishop. Bishop brings itself back. Now there is a space in front of the king for a check. So the late development of these pieces is meaning that they're now getting chased around. So again, there is a reversal of any development that they potentially think they may be trying to get. There's no team working going on. I'm still mindful of these squares here, especially here. And the bishop could do this, but it's not really going to be of any benefit. Um, maybe. But they can't do it at this moment because we have the x-ray through to the king, pinning them. So we bring the qu uh, queen round, putting a check on the king, and he maintains the bishop. So one of two things could have happened here, and I noticed it afterwards, especially after we did the demonstration. He could come here with the bishop, but the problem they would have is our knight could go anywhere because we would have a discover check with our queen on his king. So then we, we relaxed our creative brain and logicalized it to the extent that, well, it, that can't happen. So the king moves off of the line. So <clears throat> now I'm very wary that this can actually take place. But they don't actually go for it because now what we're doing is putting the forward base onto this attack situation here. So if he did come down here, there's no harm or foul because at the end of the day, our knight could come here putting a check on the queen, that's going to be busy. Then we'll be controlling, managing the centre here and getting the rooks involved, getting the bishop involved, so it would work in our favour. So the bishop takes, so now we can take the pawn. Now this is looking at releasing this pawn basically from here. It's, attack, it's a two-fold pawn attack. Yep, so if the bishop takes, then we can take with the knight. Either way, that pawn is going to open up. It would change the um, situation a little bit. Probably would take with the queen, maybe. I don't know. Because we're looking to get this bishop in here. Yep, so he takes with the pawn. Just let's have a look. If he did take with the bishop. He's not going to take with the bishop, though, is he? Because he's going to lose his bishop. Yeah, so that's really no, no sense, is that? Yeah, because if he takes there, takes there. Um... If he's thinking of going for that, I mean, that's not going to be any good because we'll be going, ooh, we could go here. Or we could just take his queen off the board. So, yeah, that whole continuation wouldn't work if they took with the bishop. So, took with the um, pawn, so then we could come through with the bishop, releasing pressure from this bishop here. Queen is protecting this bishop, so we have to be mindful of that. So now we can capture the pawn with a check on his queen. And we can take their bishop off the board quite nicely. And now we're looking to really sort of condense the area with our own queen, if need be, developing these rooks. So he takes the bishop, but he's created a problem for himself because there's a lovely juicy fork here sitting waiting. Queen's already in an ideal position, so it's just a matter now of basically taking action. So we attack, and the bishop takes. We can't take straight away, but we can just keep the pin, which is an annoying pin from the rook. And basically, this is all she wrote, basically, because there's nothing that can actually come here to prevent this move. Because the king can't move. He could move his pawn, but it's still the same thing, because the queen is along this um, rank. Could come back to defend but he's going to lose his queen so there's nothing really that they can do so they come with a um, check on the king so we can move the king out of the way quite nicely and then we go for the checkmate so that was pretty it was given to us i think it was a game that was given to us uh, in terms of development so the focus on moving the queen around early and just um, basically getting it trapped and then Basically, it's having to move, you're losing those all-important manoeuvres of developing your other pieces 
and then you end up backtracking towards the end of the game which is not really what you're wanting to be doing so that was the rapid game for today um quite an interesting game to play